Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. It's finally here after almost a two month wait. One of the most highly anticipated RC radio releases of 2020. Ah. The Radio Master TX16S Multi-Protocol Open TX 16 Channel Computerized Radio with Color Touchscreen Display. Like I said, I've been waiting for almost two months to get my paws on one of these. And uh, this isn't a pre-production or review version. It's one of the first batches of pre-ordered TX16Ss that shipped. So it should give us a fairly accurate example of the overall quality that you can expect if you were to purchase one. I want to thank Banggood right now for agreeing to send it to me so we can all have a look at it together. And as usual, I'll have product links and other useful links uh, down there in the description. I really want to cover the ergonomics and usability since many will be purchasing this radio without being able to test drive it first. I'll also open it up so we can have a look inside, hopefully giving you a better idea of the overall quality by the end of the video and if it's an OpenTX radio that you might want to consider. Now I'm not going to cover all the specs and features, you can check those out in the product links below as well as the link to the instruction manual so you can fully read up on it, which I highly recommend doing. The manual is actually very good, it covers a lot of stuff. The TX16S comes with an SD card and OpenTX already installed, so it's ready to go right out of the box. Let's get into it. As you can see, it's fairly nicely packaged and it comes in this nice foam case that will double as a carrying case. It's uh, got this little plastic hinge. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it uh, gives you an idea. And what else do we get in here? We get the uh, quick start guide, of course, which will get you going, but again, it's not nearly as good as the manual. So I highly recommend getting the full manual there. And what else do we get in here beside the radio? We'll get into that in just a bit. It comes with a USB-C cable for programming and charging. Yes, you can charge the batteries directly in the unit. We'll cover that as well. Comes with some extra tension springs for them for your gimbals. And what do we got here? Oh, it's a little keychain. <laughs> kind of cool. So, let's uh, start looking at the radio here. There's essentially two versions of the RadioMaster TX16S. One with potentiometered gimbals and no touchscreen display, or one with Hall Effect gimbals with the touchscreen display, and that's what we've got here. Uh, let's just take this screen protector off. See if we've still got the glossy screen underneath it, and yes we do. Now, I am not a fan of touch screens on RC radios. I can't stand having fingerprints on a nice display, and I'd much rather access the menus through button access but it will be interesting to see how OpenTX integrates touchscreen to the menu access and just how usable it is. Now, it doesn't have, OpenTX does not support the touchscreen yet. It's not coming out till version 2.4 apparently, and we're running on what, 2.3.9 right now? Uh, I think that's the latest version I downloaded into my Horus. So yeah, we're, we're you know, one or two versions away from some touchscreen support. Speaking of OpenTX, don't forget to toss them a small donation if you end up getting this or any other OpenTX radio system. Uh, you know, OpenTX, like most open source developers, they're nonprofit. And if we chip in a few bucks every now and then, it goes a long way to ensure they are able to keep supporting the growing number of radio systems that use their operating system firmware while they constantly improve it. You know, after all, it's largely due to the cost savings, thanks to open source developers, why we have feature rich and powerful sub $200 radios like this, you know, costing half or less of similar spec mainstream brands. Same goes for the open source multi protocol development team. Anyway, I think you can clearly see that uh, the RadioMaster TX16S was modeled off the Futaba SZ series radios just as uh, the Jumper T16 and the new T18 are. 
You know, nothing wrong with that design inspiration as I've always liked the look and feel of Futaba's MZs and ZZs. Let's put a LiPo in here to get this thing powered on. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the massive battery bay in this thing. And it allows several battery powering options. It comes with an 18650 two cell battery holder and it's got a JST XH plug on it. Or of course you can plug a, you know, a LiPo directly in it, a 2S LiPo. And this thing will charge and balance through a USB-C port in the bottom. And I'll do a charge cycle later on. I'll just show you how well the battery's charged up. And uh, let's just plug this 2S LiPo in. Oh, and if you wanted to know how big the port was for battery size, uh, we've got roughly 52 millimeters wide by about, let's call it 85 long, and usable depth is about 20 millimeters. So, power it on. Welcome to Open TX. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Speaker sounds really tinny. Uh, nothing like my Horus, which is really nice. Might just be the voice pack. One thing I don't like, and I had the same issue with my Horus, is the really shiny display. I had scratched it on mine and I had bought a uh, anti-reflective polarizing film to put on. So I don't have that issue anymore. In bright sunlight, these really shiny displays are very reflective. The first impression of this radio is it doesn't feel nearly as cheap as maybe what the pictures would uh, indicate. When I first saw it, I thought, yeah, it kind of looked plasticky and cheap, but it, it isn't that at all. It's got a decent amount of weight to it. It's not too heavy. It feels really good in the hand. The plastic is that, um, oh, I don't know. I call it fuzzy plastic, but it it's basically plastic with a rubberized coating on it. A lot of computer mice have that coating. You know, it, it doesn't leave fingerprints or anything, and it feels good. The only downside with it is sometimes over time it gets, starts getting sticky from the oils on your hands and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see over time if that happens with this. But feels really good, looks good. It's got these nice grips on the back as well. The power on light is not too bright. It's not you know blinding you like a lot of LED power lights are. The gimbal feel is really nice. Good centering, no no slop or anything in the middle. Trim center, trim center, trim, trim center. Trims are positive. Uh, toggles, we've got a two position up here. A two position sprung or momentary. Now on my radios I have my two position momentary over here and my throttle hold on the right side so I'm gonna have to swap that around inside the radio when I open it up and then you've got three position toggles on the top here two of them and you've got four three position toggles on the front. The gimbals themselves are adjustable like any gimbal they've got a little set screw in them and you can adjust the height. It's a four millimeter standard thread. I use my thumbs on my radio. I don't do pinch. And I've really started liking these umbrella stick ends. So you could certainly get uh, something like that. I find these are quite sharp. I'm gonna knock those down with a file, but that's uh, of course individual preference. The side sliders are really smooth. One on each side, the right and the left, but the detent, the centering detent is extremely weak, can hardly feel it. The front sliders or potentiometers or dials feel good, but uh, what you'll notice is they are recessed into the case and there's some movement. And I notice if you're turning it, the ridges on the dial will rub on the case. Uh, the centering detent on these is also quite weak but certainly acceptable and they're very smooth. The programming interface is pretty easy to get into their menus. Uh, it's very intuitive. You've got your model access on the right side and your system access on the left. The scroll wheel is really nice feeling. It's an anodized aluminum knurled wheel. 
with a nice positive selection click to it. And you've also got your standard open TX buttons here. You've got a return. You've got a page up, page down, and then telly, which is to access your widget setup. Uh, one thing I noticed in system that my uh, Horus doesn't have, and I know some OpenTX radios are supporting this, it's got a built-in uh, spectrum analyzer. There you can see quite a bit of stuff going on. If I just turn on my uh, Horus radio, we'll see how this fills up. Mm, you turn me on. There, and you can see the <laughs> full 2.4 gigahertz band uh, really lighting up with that radio turned on. So that's kind of a neat feature. And of course it's got uh, Crossfire compatibility already in it. So lots of features. Again, you can look over that yourself. I'm going to be downloading the Amber Voice Pack into here right away. One thing I noticed, like I said, the speaker is rather tinny. There's no port for earplugs. You know, at the top here, we've got the USB-C port for programming. We've got the DSC uh, 3.5 millimeter jack for trainer port. This is not for uh, headphones. And on the bottom, as far as bottom access goes, actually, I'm just going to turn this off for a second because I'm going to pull the SD card out while we're down here. So we've got two UART ports, a four pin and a five pin for other serial communication devices. You've got the charging USB-C port here. And here's our little SD card, which is already installed. And what is it? It is, let's get the glare out. I'll focus you little guy. So it's just 256 uh, megabytes. So it's not a huge card, but enough to store a fair amount of image files and sound files. So it's nice that it comes with that. A lot of these radios, they don't even come with an SD card. So a little bit of added value there as well. Let's power it back up here. Welcome to OpenTX. And then you've also got the six position output selection here with these six buttons. Um, I prefer an actual dial, but uh, yeah, that's again, individual preference. Uh, they do have a backlight on them, but in daylight, you're not going to see that. But it also shows you down on the uh, screen, of course, which selection you've got. And you've got all your basic OpenTX functions here. Channel output. Decent. Here's our JR port. If you want to put in modules. And the cover for it, it's not just a cover, it's a little... Uh, a little box they call it a project box so if you want to do your own rf module project you could put one in there just use the uh, included box it's got little screws you can open it up and just your standard port here's a spectrum dm9 module Let's see if it fits in there nice so that's pretty standard The charge port is at the bottom again, USB-C, which is nice, doesn't matter which uh, orientation you plug the plug in. The blue power indicator turns a nice soft green to tell you that the uh, battery is charging. So we'll come back when that's finished and check the balance of the pack. Green light is off, so the charging must be finished. Well, let's take a peek at how well this pack is balanced up. Four point one eight, four point one seven nine. <laughs> well balanced, no problems there. Now let's open this thing up. So if you want to open up the back of your TX16S, there's four Phillips screws on the back, and then there's two little hex screws on the top. You have to remove the antenna housing so the back can pop off, and you have to remove the vinyl the soft vinyl side grips. You don't have to remove these back grips. 
but uh, as we'll see, if you want to adjust your gimbals, you have to remove these and you have gimbal access through the back. And with all that removed, the back should just pop straight off. Just be careful you don't bend your pins coming into your JR port. The battery plug, the JSTXH, is attached to the board inside, so this just comes straight off, which is nice. There's no wiring or any uh, switches or anything wired on the back here. Nice strong plastic shell, nothing exceptional. One thing to note, if you look at the screws, they're not uh, machine screws or anything. They're just threaded into the plastic inserts. So don't uh, over tighten these when you thread them back in. It's not like there's a brass or a metal uh, insert molded into the standoffs and this, uh, they're just threading into the plastic. So they're fairly easy to strip out. So there's a cost savings there. But uh, like I said, plastic is decent, strong and the holes back here line up to all your gimbal adjustments we'll just go over those real quick we'll do the first one since i fly helicopters i don't want a notched or indexed throttle stick at all i just want friction so to do that we'll just loosen off the stainless friction tension band and we will screw in just the uh smooth friction band there nice and smooth nothing wrong with that there's those two adjustments on each gimbal uh, you've got a tension adjustment there little hex screw 1.5 and on this side there's the tension adjuster there and there and if you wanted to swap modes around there's a little screw going through this spring arm you can see on this side the spring arm is moving because that little screw isn't holding it out of the way like it is here so you would have to remove this screw and put it over here to pull that band up and then this this one's all loosey-goosey and you can tighten down either one of your friction bands so this would be your throttle but I fly mode too, so we're good here. Just quickly looking, nice soft high flex silicone wire. It's got a um, little uh, gob of silicone on there. And then also on the side here, the wires that move with your gimbals. There's nice strain relief on both sides of it. Looks like we've got, uh, yep, they're quad bearing gimbals, little ball bearing gimbals these are not a metal gimbal though uh, it's just got a metal aluminum face plate on it but the gimbal itself is all plastic yep so another cost savings there but wiring is all nice everything's using plugs and all the wiring is soft silicone high flex soft silicone which is nice to see switches really amazing they're all in their own little circuit boards so you don't have wires just soldered to the end of the toggles. They, the toggles are soldered into circuit boards, which are then, uh, they've got their own little wiring harness out. So that's pretty impressive. Having all these separate little printed circuit boards for all that, that's, uh, that adds to the cost of things. Main circuit board, big massive quad flat pack ARM 32-bit processor there. Just looking at it really quickly, all nicely done. Easy access to the RTC lithium cell if you when you want to replace that when your real time clock battery dies out. Uh, there's the encoder board there. There's the board for all your switches, trims. Well laid out, really compact. Of course, there's the multi-protocol module and uh, the coax cable going up to a uh, sleeve dipole uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna pretty standard everything's tied off nice good wire management they've got ample amounts of glue on the antenna lead so there's no movement there the ufl connector is nicely glued so no movement so you don't have to worry about the ufl connector uh, coming loose now the one thing I noticed is going to be hard for me to change my momentary toggle over to this side. Looks like I'll have to take out both switches 
and swap the whole switch array over. They just plug in, but it's not just going to be a matter of unsoldering some wires and switching it. Uh, and the other thing I really like about all these all these open source radios, FR Sky, Jumper, the uh, Radio Master here, you can buy replacement parts for them. So if you wear out a gimbal, you wear out a switch, even the main board, the screen, you can buy replacement parts. So let's get this thing back together. I don't think there's anything else that uh, we have to look at in here from a usability standpoint. The TX-16S is all back together. I've downloaded all my models from my Horus. They downloaded fine using the OpenTX Companion. Uh, converted fine from Horus to uh, the Radio Master. Haven't seen any issues. I've looked through quite a few of them. Everything seems to be working fine. I've already gone flying this little OMP M2 Heli. No problems whatsoever. My biggest criticism of this radio is the speaker. Um, I have switched my toggles around, so I've got the two position on the right, oh, yeah. that was the right switch. and the momentary on the left, but as you heard, even with full volume, I've gone into the settings, made sure the wave volume is maxed right out. Oh, yeah. that was the right switch. It's quite tinny and it just isn't that loud. You know, here by comparison is my Horus, I've actually got the volume turned down. Oh, yeah. That was the right switch. With it turned up. Oh yeah, that was the right switch. Oh yeah, that was the right switch. Just no comparison, and when the heli was flying close in, couldn't even hear it. So I would really like to see a better speaker in this, and why they don't have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for earphones, no idea. You know, maybe I'm just blind and missing it. If I am, please comment below. You know, I know they're trying to cut costs. This is a low cost radio, but uh, really how hard would it be to put a phono jack in? While using it, no issues at all. You know, the display is really reflective. I would like to see an anti-glare coating on that. Uh, you know, the centering position of the side sliders, non-existent almost. Like to see a more positive detent there, but not a big deal. Holding it, uh, it just feels wonderful in the hand. Your hand just fits naturally around the radio and the gimbal feel is fantastic. The collective, now that I've just got it on the friction band and not the ratcheting band, it's butter smooth. Really happy with that. You can't see this little blue power light outside, but that doesn't bother me at all. I'd rather not see it outside than being blinded by it uh, inside or when it's darker out. The range seemed good. Granted, it was just a small heli. I wasn't flying that far away, but uh, no problems. So if you're in the market for a low cost radio, but want lots of features, uh, this is pretty hard to beat. We're getting a 16 channel computerized radio, multi-protocol module, color display, Hall Effect gimbals for under $150. Just amazing value. I expect to be using this radio quite a bit over the summer here. I'm um, expecting a couple of little neat helicopters to come in over the next several weeks and I'll be doing reviews on those and I'll be setting them up in this radio. So you'll be seeing this radio a little bit more. For the price, the quality and features, outstanding, right? Thanks for watching folks and until next time, Happy flights.